Hi everyone, it's the 5th of October and it's time for the 5th film in my 31 Horrors of Mike. So last time we were talking about the 1942 mystery horror film Cat People and we're going to be hurtling back forward 40 odd years to the 1980s to one of my favourite horrors from that era. It's the 1987 film The Lost Boys directed by Joel Schumacher. Now I know what you're going to say, you hear the, the words Joel followed by Schumacher and uh, you probably cringe and think of Batman and Robin and maybe even Batman and for, uh, Batman Forever. Uh, I have to say though, even though Batman and Robin is pretty terrible, The Lost Boys is still one of my favourite films and probably one of the films which uh, I think about most fondly as a, as a child sort of growing up. It was born out of that era where you had a lot of teenagers uh, being in films, uh, you had a lot of films like uh, The Goonies for example and interestingly Richard Donner who directed The Goonies was going to direct The Lost Boys um, but the project just went on and on and on and on and eventually it was given to Joel Schumacher and the original versions of the script, the script was actually about a uh, group of uh, kids of sort of around about the ages of 8, 9, 10 much similar to The Goonies and uh, I think in many ways it was sort of pitched as The Goonies Goes Supernatural. So The Lost Boys is about a family comprised of Wendy the mother, uh, Michael and Sam the two sons, Michael being the older son. Um, Michael I think is in his late teens and Sam is in his mid teens. And they come to stay with their grandfather in a place called Santa Cruz, this small town, the small coastal town rather. And while they're there, um, and they're obviously kind of uh, reeling from or trying to recover from some sort of family breakup, uh, because the father is nowhere nowhere to be seen, they inadvertently start to realise that Santa Cruz, in fact, is a bit of a vampire hotspot, and that there is a gang of uh, young vampires going around killing people. And unfortunately, Sam's older brother Michael becomes infected with. Uh, the, the with vampirism and it's kind of about how Sam with the help of two local brothers, the Frog Brothers uh, how he tries to save his brother and uh, how they all try to you know, square off with these uh, this vampire gang it's a film which uh, is very specific in its tone it's a film that I think gets the tone just right it's got the sort of campy cheesy 80s vibe to a degree but it's very deliberate and also um, I think it still manages to come off as, as somewhat serious while having <coughs> a lot of comic relief and having some of the adventurous aspects and some of the adventurous spirits, uh, spirit of many of the other 80s films like The Goonies and The Explorers and, and uh, movies like that. I just, I just love this film. Yeah, some of it's very MTV um, I think it was in the Cinephiles, I think it was maybe, um, I think it was maybe Eric said that the problem with Joel Schumacher is that he had this idea about what was cool and uh, he tried to sort of, in all of his films he's always trying to stay trendy rather than actually do what he should be doing which is following his own sort of creative aspirations and I can understand why he says that about something like The Lost Boys because uh, The Lost Boys does have a very sort of MTV vibe from the sort of time the vampires are kind of dressed like your sort of stereotypical um, your sort of stereotypical teenagers of the time but in terms of being like sort of rock musicians or something like that uh, but that aside I think we've got some really really strong performances you have Corey Haim playing Sam excellent um, I think he's. I think he was a sad loss, to be honest. I think it was really tragic what happened to to him and his career. Um, you have Corey Feldman, who was just like a sort of mainstay of nineteen eighties films. Uh, he plays uh, one of the Frog Brothers, and, and he's just phenomenal. And uh, you have Kiefer Sutherland, who's excellent as well. But across the board, um, I should say Kiefer Sutherland plays one of the sort of main vampires. But across the board, all the acting is great. There's a fantastic score. Um, and there's just this, uh, th there's this nice juxtaposition between this sort of uh, sun-filled uh, town, coastal town, where it looks like everybody's sort of just 
laying back and taking it easy and, and enjoying that sort of climate surfing and having beach parties and all that sort of stuff but at the same time there's this underbelly of you know uh, some sort of I don't know if you call it supernatural but the, you know the vampires are on the loose there there's something in the dark and, and I do like that sure part of my love for this film is probably nostalgia but I, I do genuinely think I try to be objective about it I do still think it's a really strong movie I think it's got all the beats right, the pacing's really good um, it doesn't really get cluttered up, there's some great exploration of vampire mythology um, and uh, one of my favourite scenes is when they try to test a character who's trying to date uh, Sam and Michael's mother to see if he's a vampire and they use all the old sort of um, vampire rules like garlic and mirrors and things like that and the whole ending is great when they actually face off with the vampires so I would really really recommend it um, you probably have seen it, it's quite a popular film now, certainly it's got a very very strong cult following so much so that there's been two sequels, <clears throat> there's one called The Tribes which isn't really up to much, it's okay, it's watchable but it's not that great but I have to say, um, as controversial as it may be I actually quite enjoyed the third one which is called Lost Boys The Thirst and it's, it, I, I actually think it's quite a quite a fun little film even though it's kind of it's kind of so bad it's good in places but it also has one of the most original dispatches of a vampire I've seen in any film uh, the conclusion of it but I just enjoyed it I thought it was good and it was a good exp exploration of the Frog Brothers from the the original film I think the most important thing that uh, I haven't mentioned about the Lost Boys is the fact that obviously the the name and I didn't think about this growing up even though I was a fan of Peter Pan the Lost Boys the Lost Boys are obviously the kids that live in Never Never Land and never grow old and um, never lose their, lose their childhood and that's a reference to uh, it's a reference to Peter Pan um, but it's a nice little spin on it which is well what if the Lost Boys were vampires and that's why they never aged um, and I do I do like that great film full of um, sort of uh, feel-good 80s uh, an 80s sentiment or vibe but not being so sickly sweet it's it's just it's a lot of great jokes and great chemistry between Corey Feldman and Corey Haim I loved watching them in The Lost Boys and uh, a film I really love watching them in as well is actually The Licence to Drive it's not one that really gets talked about very often but I think they're great in that and I think it's a smashing little comedy uh, so anyway Go check The Lost Boys out if you haven't seen it. You probably have, but if you haven't, definitely check it out because it's just a great little vampire film. And I think it's up there with, if not better than uh, Fright Night, which is possibly my favourite 1980s vampire movie. I know a lot of people are going to see Near Dark, which I watched for the last 31 Horrors of Mike last year. I did really enjoy that, but I still, you know, Fright Night, there's some great 80s films, Fright Night, Vamp, um, which is really unknown, definitely check that out. Um, and uh, near dark you know so definitely go and go and watch those and I'll be back tomorrow with my sixth of uh, this year's 31 Horrors of Mike as always leave suggestions let me know what you think of these films and I'll be happy to talk away with these I'm sort of working through a backlog of comments at the moment on all my channels but I will get there in the end so I uh, hope you all have a great weekend and I will see you tomorrow yeah, I'll see you through the weekend anyway. I don't know why I'm saying that. Uh, bye for now.